Okay, we got it started recording. Let me make sure I can see everybody. Attendees, dashboard, questions, perfect. Okay, welcome everybody to Bird Dog and Opportunities with Scott Travis. It is Monday, September 15th. Uh, beautiful Monday. We're starting a little bit late. Sorry, I was running to the... Uh, run into the computer and all of a sudden I had to reboot everything. So I apologize for that, but we'll get it going. Um, tonight's going to be kind of fun. I'm for me, I think I had a, a good time doing this, um, getting ready for doing this tonight. It's a uh, big issues that we're having is, is kind of a definition of what, what we're looking for as a bird dog. So I think I'm going to kind of go over what I am going to go over tonight is, is a few things you can't hear me. Okay. Someone says they can't hear me. Let me put my screen on so you can see me. So you know I'm talking. Okay. <clears throat> you guys should be able to see me. You should see my screen. You should hear me. If we are recording. One more thumbs up from somebody out there to let me know that you can hear me, see me, and you can see my screen. Anybody, please. Yeah, all, yeah. all the above. Okay, buddy, thanks. I'm going to turn my – okay, perfect. Thanks, bud. Um, okay, now you can hear me and you can see my screen. So there we go. Okay, once again, Monday, September 15th, uh, what we're going to go over is kind of uh, the definition of a bird dog. And, and uh, I've got Ivan. I know that he's, uh, he's lurching in the background, and he's more than welcome. Whenever you want to come on, Ivan, and, and spout up, I'd appreciate it. Um, I tried to go through as much as I could. Uh, what I remember, and, and we'll, we'll have a good time tonight, though. Uh, once again, I will be watching for questions, or if you guys have a question, raise your hand and you want to talk <clears throat> live, that's absolutely fine, too. Um, we, I try and get over to the questions as soon as possible, as soon as, as soon as you ask them, so that we can kind of stand there for a couple of minutes and, and get through that. So um, let's get started. Uh-oh. <laughs> it won't go. Uh. I want to get started. There we go. Defining a bird dog. That's what we're going to try and go over tonight. Um, what's the job of a bird dog? Uh, the job of a bird dog, in, in my definition, is to find a property, do all the due diligence in it, uh, meaning uh, comps, square footage, address. And we're going to go through that later on. But, you know, we've done this you know week after week, and I think I try and touch on it each week on what exactly that we're looking for. And we're still having some issues with um, some stuff that's getting sent in. So uh, we went over it a little bit last week also. But, you know, who can, a, who can be a bird dog? Anybody out there can be a bird dog. Everyone that's listening can be a bird dog. There's different forms of bird dog, and we're going to go over those, wholesaling, JV, and all that other stuff tonight. But we're going to get down to exactly what we're looking for as a bird dog. Um, benefits of being a bird dog, uh, the benefits – I don't know if they outweigh the the risk. There's no money involved in it. Um, there's just a lot of research to do. And when we get a property that's sent from from someone from someone out there or from someone that's not even on here, because um, we have contacts without this uh, webinar, um, they're still falling short. So you know, I really want to kind of get this down pat so that. We don't have a lot of people coming back and saying, well, I've sent you, you know, five deals, quote unquote, and you, you, you don't want to do them. Well, 99% 99 of the time is we don't have enough information. We don't have what we need to get it going. You know, I mean, that's, uh, that's basically what it is. You know, there's, there's different levels of it, uh, of being a bird dog in some people's mind. It's, it's just, it's doing a little bit and hoping that we'll do the rest and then getting paid for, you know, no research. It's just a, a piece of paper that they, that they send you. So are you a lead finder? You know, this is, this is basically a lot of the stuff that we've been getting is people that get leads. Um, and a lead is you, you can go on MLS, you go to Trulia um, for sale by owners, you know, finding leads. That's not, you know, that's really not what we're looking for. If, if we want to do that, we can open up the, we can open up the newspaper ourselves and we still do. I know, I know I do. Um, the newspaper, the internet, the, um, the Zillow, all my, all my contacts, you know, they're just bringing leads. They're not doing any of the research. They say, Hey, I, I, I find, I, I found this deal. Do you think it's going to be a deal? Then I do the research on it. So now I'm, I'm basically bird dogging myself. Um, lead finders pass deals on. That's all they do. 
they just pass a deal. If you were to find uh, 123 Grape Street and it's for sale and you say, hey, I just drove by this property and here's the address, it's for sale. That's a lead. That's not a bird dog. That is finding a property that's for sale and passing it along. Don't do any research. That's what it is. Just the deal, address, and price, and a contact. That is considered a lead. A lot of the emails and a lot of the stuff that I've been getting are leads, which is absolutely fine. But if we go and close on that deal, and in the end of it, you come up to me and say, well, I gave you that. I, I, I bird dogged that for you. Well, you gave me a lead. Well, I'd be more than happy to find you or pay you a, a lead finder fee, but I, I don't think it's really what you have in mind. <laughs> it, it, as opposed to a bird dog, you know, um, leads. I don't even know what the, what the going rate to find, to, to get a lead is. I mean, it's, if I were to pay, if I were to pay a dollar, literally, if I had to pay a dollar for every lead that I've gotten in the last two weeks, I'd pay a hundred dollars. I mean, it's just tons of people send me stuff. Mm -hmm. That's an address. So, um, uh, just a lead deal and address or wait a minute, just the deal is an address and a price and a contact, okay? That's what a lead is. Lead finders do nothing but convey a possible deal, okay? Say that again. Lead finders do nothing but convey a possible deal. And I don't want, I don't want this group, of, uh, when we have this, these webinars and these, everybody out there that's participating in it, I do not want you guys to get caught up in sending me leads. There's no... There's no, I'm going to tell you now, there's not going to be any monetary value in sending me a lead. And I, and I hate to say that, and I hate to be so rude about it, but it's, it's simple. There's, I, I have to do all the work, and I have no problem doing the work. And, and trust me, when you send me a, a, a bird dog, you know, a, a bird dogging address that you've got all this stuff, I still do the research. After it comes to me, I send it off to Ivan. So Ivan gets to do it. You know, so don't think that you're having to do all the work, but all the upfront work, absolutely, so that we can move on and we can get, get money passed on. That, that's what you need to understand. We, I have no problem with paying a bird dogging fee. I, I'm not trying to get out of paying anybody what they're, what they're doing. I have no problem paying to do the job that we're asking you to do. But if you do part of it and you expect 100%, it's not going to happen. I just, I just tell you that right now. It just can't. Um, you can go to Zillow, look there, and say, here's a house for sale. I mean, you know, I've had some people that literally I've, I've looked at it that way, and this is more of a wholesale, is, is they give me an address. I go on Zillow right away. The house is for sale. The house isn't, the house isn't under contract. It's nothing. That's just they're telling me, hey, if you, call this, if you call this person, this house is for sale. If you call this realtor, this house is for sale. So I, I don't need any of that stuff. That is not a bird dog, okay? We're going to go over. This is not a bird dog. To pass me off um, a lead uh, when you do no, no work in it, just convey a possible deal, that's not considered a bird dog, okay? So if there's any questions, <laughs> let's go through them so we, we understand, okay? Next one is, it, are you a wholesaler? You know, a wholesaler has a whole bunch of different things to go on. A wholesaler puts the property under contract, meaning that they have done the due diligence. They've looked at what the rehab costs are going to cost. They've had someone go out there and give them a bid. A good. Let me let me back this up. The proper way to wholesale is what I'm going to be saying. Wholesalers still get caught up in between a bird dog and a lead finder, also. So. This is what I expect from a wholesaler. They get the property under contract. They sign it. They get it in their name or their company name or wherever they're going to, the entity that they want to put it into. They put their name on it. They get the, um, they sign all the, all the paperwork for it. They put the earnest money down as far as, you know, whether it's a 3%, $10,000, whatever the requested amount is for an earnest money deposit, and their money is at risk. Their money is at risk, meaning if they don't find someone to buy it or to wholesale it to, their money is gone. Whether Let's just use a round number. If they have a $10,000 earnest money deposit and it's supposed to close in five days, if they don't find someone to purchase that property, they better make sure that they, that they get their money back on the fourth day of that, of that five days left. Okay, 
So that's their risk. They have a risk involved into it. Um, there's no guarantee that they're going to be that someone's going to buy it. If a wholesaler sends me a, a property and says, you know, here's what I have. So what I'm going to ask for them is, okay, since you've done it this far, show me the bid, show me your your contractor's bids, show me exactly what we're looking for. If we're buying it for a hundred thousand, you're telling me the ARV is two hundred thousand. You've got a bid for fifty thousand dollars in um, in rehab money. And you're telling me that you want a $10,000 wholesaling fee, that's $160,000 without taking into consideration holding costs and realtor's fees. So if you're a good wholesaler, make sure that your numbers are right. You know, that's, that's what we have to make sure of. If I have no problem with working with wholesalers, if you're, if you're listening out there right now and you're a wholesaler and you'd rather be a wholesaler because you think you're going to make more money wholesaling deals, that's absolutely fine with me, but understand that if the numbers don't work in, within our schedule, we're not buying it. We're not going to take it up. We're not doing it. So, you know, that's what you have to really watch out for if you're going to wholesale. You know, a wholesaler finds the deal, which we all know that. I mean, you have to find a deal to put it under contract, right? They do all the research needed to buy the property. So a wholesaler is inevitably a is someone that is willing to buy that property, whether they can wholesale it off or not. And I say that for the simple reason that if you have, if they have money, earnest money deposit down and they mess up and they go past the, you know, allotted amount of time, that earnest money deposit is gone. They forfeited it. So if they're looking to make 5,000 or $10,000 on a wholesale de deal and they have $10,000 in the um, earnest money, and they and they mess it up and they skip on it they they lose out then they just lost ten thousand dollars instead of making ten thousand dollars that's the risk in a wholesaler okay a wholesaler puts money up front that's it they have they are at risk of of putting the, the property under contract with money down now there's probably wholesalers out there and if, if any of you are and you want to talk up i'd be more than happy to talk about this you know there's a lot of um uh, a lot of wholesalers will say that, that that we don't put any money up. Well, then I would really like to um, I'd really like to see how you do that. You know, I mean, if you're just going to put your name on a contract and then sell the contract, I don't know how else you're going to tie that property up. If I'm a, if I'm a uh, a seller of the house and someone says, I want to put my name on the contract so I can wholesale it. Basically, they're just wanting to be another realtor. So you have a double realtor in the, involved in the deal. No reason for that. As a, as a seller, if a wholesaler wants to buy it from me, absolutely not, not a problem. But I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to, collect the, I'm going to collect the earnest money deposit, and I'm going to make that earnest money good as quick as I can. Me good meaning um, non-returnable as quick as I can, especially if I know that you're a, contra er, er, a wholesaler. Okay. So the, the wholesaler put money up front. Understand that. Wholesalers get the property under contract. They have to get the property under contract to quote unquote be a true wholesaler, meaning that their name is on the contract. I now am not buying, technically I'm now not buying the property from the, the seller of the property. I'm buying it, I'm buying it from the wholesaler. And that's kind of a that's kind of a broad explanation there. The seller is still selling it, but the, but the seller is selling it to the wholesaler at closing. The wholesaler's name is getting taken off, and our name is getting put back on. So it it's, could be a double closing. It could be just a, an addendum to the, the contract. Okay, So if that's, that's what that is. Wholesalers get the property under contract, and I can't say that enough. They get it under contract. It's not as though we have to now negotiate. They've already got the negotiated price. So... If we look at it and say he's got it on, or he or she has it under contract for hundred thousand dollars, but our numbers say that we need to buy it at, at eighty or eighty-five thousand, we can't negotiate that price anymore. That price is solid. That price is a hundred thousand dollars to put our name on it. So, understand that there's no negotiation skills. Um, well, it, depending on how much the, the wholesaler is making on it, we could possibly make some make some. Um, make some money, you know, if he gives up money on his end as far as what how much he's making and we give up a little bit on our end and how much more we're going to pay. Hope I if that made sense, I'm 
I hope I went through that easy enough. The wholesaler puts the property under a certain contract price. Let's say it's $100,000. Let's say that the, the wholesaler wants to make $10,000 on the deal. So now we would buy the, we are basically buying the wholesale contract for $110,000. The wholesaler will get $10,000 at closing. We will, the, the seller will still get his $100,000. Now, if we think that the house is only, once again, if the house is only worth 85, the wholesaler has purchased the property for 100 and he wants to make 10,000, you know, that's where the money he's going to have to give up or he or she's going to have to give up some on his 10,000 and we're going to have to go up if the money's there. Nothing's saying that we have to do that. I'm just saying that is where the negotiation, now you're negotiation, now you're negotiating with the wholesaler. Okay? So, wholesalers need to sell the contract or lose money. Understand that. They if they do not sell the contract, they lose their earnest money. And that's it. So, okay. So, is that a bird dog? In our definition, that is not a bird dog. If you're a wholesaler, and you, and you email me and you say, I have a wholesale deal, I will look at it completely different than I will look at it as a bird dogging deal, okay? If you have a lead, I will look at it completely different than I will look at it as a, from a bird dog, okay? And this, this webinar is bird dogging opportunities, and we're trying to get it to be where you understand what we're looking for as a bird dog. Do we deal with wholesalers? Yes. Will we turn a wholesaler down? No. Will we look at the deals? Yes. So don't think that we're not going to work with the wholesaler or we won't work with someone that has a lead. I'll, I'll snip out a lead. If it looks like it's good from the very beginning, I'll take the, I'll, I'll look it through the, till the end. So don't, you know, I'm just trying to define the bird dog for you. So when you send me a quote unquote bird dogging deal, you understand what we're looking for. <clears throat> Next one. Are you a money partner? Is that, what, is, is that what you are? Are you a money partner? Do you want to become a money partner with us? Do we want money partners? Yes. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to see the theme through this whole night is do we, do we turn anybody down on any of these deals that we're, that we're looking for? No. That a money partner is basically just a lender. Do we, do we like lenders? Yes. Will we work with you? Yes. But it's not being a bird dog. <laughs> so that's what we're trying to get through. Okay. Money partners are looking to invest their money. Basically, it's a lender who can pull out of their 401k. They have um, IRA money. They want to, they're tired of making 2% in the bank. They would like to, um, they, they may not, <clears throat> they may or may not know anything about real estate. Um, actually, we have one that we're doing in, um, that we're working with right now. It had X amount of money he wanted to invest. Didn't care what city, what state, what it was. He just wanted to know what it, what what to do. How, how can he get his money to, to make money for him? So he's a money partner. He's a lender. He doesn't he doesn't pick out anything. Any of the um, he doesn't look at the contract. He just he just wants to lend money, and we have a joint venture agreement with him. Basically, is what it looks like. Okay, money partners do nothing. I can't I can't emphasize that enough. They don't do anything. They are not involved in picking out the paint. They're not involved in picking out the contractor. They're not involved in if we're going to add a room or take a room away or add square footage or put a garage on. They are strictly, they're going to look at our prospectus of the job. If it fits with, if they feel comfortable with that and they feel as though that we've done our due diligence, that we're going to make money on it, that is what they're going to do. Only thing they do is write a check. That's it. It's all money partners do. Write a check. I'm just looking over here to see if there's any questions. I think we're going okay. So if there is anything, once again, <laughs> jump on there, type it in, or raise your hand, and I'll get to you. Um, lenders do no research. The research that they do is that they do the research on us. Make sure that we're who we say we are, um, you know, However, they feel comfortable lending someone money. I mean, it was, you have to understand, if you're going to lend someone money, whether it's your mother, your father, your kid, or your friend down the street, you're going to check them out. You're going to know who they are. I mean, obviously, a, a lender will do the exact same thing with us. Do we like lenders? Absolutely. Will we use them? Yes. Do you, do you know someone that has money that wants to lend money? If you do, 
Scott at C2CREIA.com or Ivan at C2CREIA.com. Simple. Will, will you get paid for that fee for, um, for give, giving us the lead for a lender? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'm, I'm trying to answer a lot of these questions that I put up here with either yes or no answers so that you can go back and listen to this if there's a question or if you have a question, it, it will be answered on this webinar tonight. Um, the lenders secure their money through the real estate, meaning that they're going to secure their money. If they give us $100,000, they're going to want to make sure that that $100,000 is secure, whether it be through a personal, um, a personal guarantee, which we just signed a personal guarantee on a loan that we took out, Ivan and, and myself and, and Pete, we took a, a personal guarantee, meaning that if we didn't sell the house, then we guaranteed that we were going to pay them back whatever they lent us. Okay. Now, was their name still tied into the house in a, in a certain way? Yes, it would be tied in. But if they have a personal guarantee, they're, all they have to do is come after each one of us or individually or all together and say, your name is on here and you sign this, that you're going to pay me 100000 or whatever we borrowed from them, and we need it. <laughs> and that's what they do. So that is a lender, a money partner, however you want to say it. Okay. Money partners get paid when the home is sold. That's it. That we, we, we have an a, a end date. We give them a certain amount of time when we feel as though the property is going to be sold. Um, when the property is sold, that is when we give them their money back plus a percentage of the profit. Now, this is where it's – there's this is not considered a JV in my word, in my world. We'll get into a JV in a little bit, but this is a lender. So, and this is exactly what we have with one of our, our lenders right now, investors right now. You could put it an investor or a lender. Investors right now, they lent us X amount. We, we uh, negotiated to pay them a certain amount at the, end of the, at the end of the job that they are guaranteed to get, and that's it. So if we sell the property for – if we make a million dollars on the property and we had a guarantee and we had a guarantee to pay them a hundred thousand, that's what's in our contract. Then they get a hundred thousand and we get 900. Now, if the property sells for a hundred thousand and they lent us a hundred thousand, they get the hundred thousand and we get nothing. I mean, plain and simple. So, you know, there's, there's ways of negotiating this with lenders. There's ways of, of dealing, doing deals with lenders and it's all open to however the two parties feel comfortable. Okay. Is that a bird dog? No, that's still not a bird dog. <laughs> okay, so that's that's completely different. If you call or if you email us and say that you know that that there's someone that has some money that we'd like to invest, we we will look at that. We will call them. We will talk to them. Have no problem. Will you get paid for sending us that lead? Yes, you will. So again, a yes answer and a no answer. That's not a bird dog. Will you get paid if you have someone that is interested in being a lender? Yes. Okay. So that's, that is what a lender, not a joint venture in my world. That's just a lender. Okay. Do you want a joint venture? JV. I hope I'm not going too fast here. I want to, I want to get this real simple and uh, kind of as clear and, and concise as I can. So if you have any questions, just type them in. Um, it's some of the questions if you have right now, I, they might, I might be answering them here in a couple minutes, but I have no problem with answering anything that you have or raise your hand and we'll get to you. So do you want a joint venture? Again, um, a joint venture is very similar to a lender, but it's more of the joint venture is, is virtually the same as it, excuse me, a joint venture agreement is a lot like an investor, except I think that a joint venture, the joint venture partner has a little bit more say in the deal, okay? You're working a little bit closer with each other. Um, they still come to the table with the money, you know, in, in that deal. They, uh, I'd like to let them have a little bit more, once again, a little bit more say. We go into a contract with both of our names on the deal that we are both connected to it. Um, again, they are connected through the real estate. Joint venture partners are just like money partners. Um, and there's very little difference in them, except usually a joint venture partner is if we were to do a joint venture with a, uh, a money partner, they would 
take the money. They would be 100% invested in the money. We would be 100% invested in doing the rehab, the purchase, the rehab, and the sale. And a lot of times we do, we'll do a, a 60-40 or a 50-50. Uh, 40% to the, to the joint venture, 60 to us, or a 50-50 to the two of us. Or if it's a bigger deal and there's enough money, we have no problem with going into um, looking for options. And that's just it. When we're in a joint venture agreement, it's both parties feeling comfortable with the deal. Okay. Do we want a joint venture? Yes. If you have someone out there that would like to invest and wants to know a little bit about doing real estate, but doesn't know the hands-on part of it, and they want a joint venture with someone that has the experience, that's us. If, if you have the money and you don't really, you haven't done a lot of these, that's, that's what we're here for. So do we, do we like to, to joint venture with people? Yes. If you want a joint venture and you have money that you don't know a lot about rehabbing or doing the transaction, yes, we want to work with you. Okay? So there's two more yes answers. Um, they want to see the scope. Usually a joint venture partner, we get involved with a little bit more in depth as far as what we're doing with the property, how we're going to improve it as far as you know, if we if we spend twenty thousand dollars here, will we be will we be making forty thousand on the back end? So, we'll, if we put twenty thousand in, will we be doubling that money on the way back? That's what we like to look for. So, we might have a discussion with them and say, "Hey, you know, we could use another twenty thousand dollars for this project, and if we do, we're going to guarantee our not guarantee. We're gonna we're gonna up our chances for getting a hundred percent, two hundred percent return on that money. Would you like to do that? If not, that's absolutely fine." So you see the joint, a, a JV partner has a little bit more say in what we do. Obviously, they're the money partner. Obviously, they have, um, that we're going to let them talk more if they have different ideas. Um, but we, that's the other thing too is, is as a JV, usually that could mean that you want to go and do this on your own. We're here to help you. We're here to talk you through why we wouldn't do something or why we should do this. So you're going to learn from that also. Um, Usually, will ask to be put on the title. Absolutely, they will. They will be on title. That's what's securing their money. the The title of the property that we're working on secures their money. Okay, JV partner will look for a percentage of the profit. Just wait till it stops. <laughs> look, for, we'll look for a percentage of the profit negotiated beforehand. So that's why I'm saying 60, 40, 50, 50, 60, 40 the other way. That's normally the where it's at. So all that will be penciled out. All that will have, Ivan will have his finger and his pen sharpened on that and making sure that we're all covered, both sides, both parties. I have a, I have a attorney that I deal with that if I have any paperwork that I, I want my, in my joint venture partner to feel comfortable with, then I send it through my attorney. Usually when I do something like that in the past, I've had them send the money to the attorney which means that we're, we, we've signed a contract to do a joint venture project together. Your, your um, defined role is to be the money partner. My defined role is to purchase the property. You're going to know what property we're going to be purchasing. Purchase the property, rehab the property, get the property back on market, and sell it. So what happens is the joint venture partner will send a check in to the attorney. The attorney will then... Uh, send the, that check into escrow. Escrow will then send the um, title back to the attorney. The attorney will hold it. So there's a line of security in the joint venture partner that I or we do not hold title on it. We don't have anything to do with the title. But in the description of the sales, we, we define it and we write it out as far as what is the percentage partners when we go to sell it. So the security in that is the money partner, the money partner of the joint venture has a security that's using an attorney that's not going to risk their attorney license or be disbanded from the bar because of a $100,000, $60,000, $200,000 um, deal. There's no, you know, the, the attorney that I deal with is, and we can go with your attorney. It doesn't matter, you know, just it's the security factor and what people feel comfortable with. Okay, so I'm trying to go through these. Um, there is defined roles between the JV partners, and that's what I've been saying from the very beginning. 
the defined role of the JV partner, as far as we are concerned, if we were to go into a joint venture deal with you or someone that you know that has money that wants to get involved in real estate but doesn't know how to do the real estate part of it, the defined role would be a money partner. Our role would be the, the, the acquisitions, the rehab, the sale. That's what it is. That's the basic defined roles when, that we are looking for for a JV partner, joint venture partner. Okay? So is there any questions on that? I'm just looking. And I don't have my screen up tonight. I mean, I can put it up. But I'm just looking to make sure that there's no questions so we get out. So once again, if you want a JV, a joint venture deal, this is not a bird dog. Okay? This is not a bird dog. <laughs> so that's what I want to get through to you. All these things that we've gone over tonight so far is we've gone over the, the joint venture. We've gone over a, a, a lender, someone that finds the deals, you know, a lead person, a lead person, excuse me, a lead person. This is still not defined in my world as a bird dog. Do we, are we open to these um, opportunities for us and for you? Yes. Will we work with this? Yes. Do we like to deal do deals this way? Yes. We're doing them right now. We have we have a a, a quote unquote a lender that for all intents and purposes because he has no idea what uh, he knows the address of the property. He's on title, um, but could care less what we're doing to the property. So he's a lender. He's not a joint venture partner, and he's not getting a fifty percent split of it. We have got a defined role in the beginning of how much we were paying him. So he was a lender to us. If he was a joint venture partner and he wanted to you know, be a 50-50 split, then he would have more uh, involved with it. But as of this point, for the one deal that we're doing with this one particular person, um, that is a lender. Okay? So what we're all waiting for. Are you a bird dog? <laughs> um, bird dog looks in multiple listings. Okay? Bird dog looks at uh, bandit signs or puts up bandit signs. You can put these up. This is, this is it. <laughs> Going, I, I think they're, I mean, last I checked, I, I'm not a big bandit sign person, but I know that the people are. I know that there's a lot of people that do bandit signs. Um, if you want more information on it, I'd have to look it up. I'm not a big person on bandit signs, but I know that they work in certain areas and at certain times. Bird dogs find vacant houses that are boarded up. That's that's what we do, you know, as a bird dog. We look for that stuff. You get unoccupied homes that look in, that are in distress. Houses for sale with a realtor. Once again, from the very beginning in the MLS, we get all that information. And the most important thing is we get comps. We get comparable listing prices or comparable sold prices for that area. That's, that is what the majority of thing that, that we're missing on a lot of people that are sending stuff in. We don't have comps. We don't under, we're, we're getting comparables that don't match what we're trying to buy. They're not, they're not a good comparable analysis when we go to sell the property. We can't, we can't say, that our house that we're trying to sell for $200,000 is worth $200,000 when it's a three bedroom, one bath, when there's four bedroom, two baths, that are selling for $190,000. That's, that's just not the way it works. We can't, unless we have gold plated toilets, um, black swans in the pool, you know, I mean, I, I just can't, I just can't explain it. We have to compare apples to apples. It's not, you know, if you, you have to put it in, in this in this way, if you're going to look at a house, you're not going to pay twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars more than a house that you can get down the street that's bigger, newer, and has more amenities. You, you're not going to. Don't play me or us or the buyer, the future buyer of the house, to be stupid. It's just not. It doesn't work. You have to think. You know, I think sometimes what happens is when you think you have a deal, we just think of the now. We don't think of the end result. You have to think of it at the, if you were the buyer. Whenever I do a house, 
I always want it to be where no matter what stage of my life is, I'm in, would I move into that house? I may not move into that area, but I want to know that once I close that front door, that everything is nice enough for me to live in. That's it. You, you have to do it that way. You cannot, you cannot put in something that you wouldn't expect yourself to live in. It, it, let, me, let me back up for one second. In a certain price point, you're going you're gonna to downgrade some of the um, materials. But still, the finished product has to be a nice, clean, presentable, beautiful product. And I won't, I won't go down on that. Whether it's got Formica countertops in the kitchen and we have a plastic surround sound in the bathroom, I want to know that I have no problem moving into that house. It is, it's functionally correct. It works properly. The heating works. The air conditioning works. The floors are beautifully clean. The house is nicely painted on the inside and the out. The, I, I, would, I would have a, a dinner party there. If, if, my, if my family wanted to come over, it would be presentable and nice enough to bring that. You know, you have to think on the end. You know, don't, don't play buyers for being stupid because it's not going to happen. There's not going to be someone out there unless they want this particular street, this particular house. They have, a, they have some emotional connection. Are they ever going to pay over, list, over what the market will bear? So you could put that property up for $200,000 and, and, and I could show you down, up and down the street within a half a mile that the, the biggest, the, the most sold, the highest priced house in that neighborhood was $160,000. You're never going to get $200,000. So don't send me a comp that's three miles away that sold a year and a half ago and says, and tell me that that's what you're going to, that's what we're going on. It doesn't work. It's not going to work. I'm not, I'm not stupid. And the end buyer is not stupid any, either. Um, Mike's got a question here for everyone. Uh, once again, what are your number percentage rules? We, we went over that and I almost put that up tonight. It's just simple. It's a, it's, it's at least a 70% rule and we get, you can even drop it down this way. If we spend a hundred thousand dollars, we need a $25,000 return, hundred thousand dollars, meaning purchase price, rehab, holding costs, uh, realtors fees, everything else. If everything works out to a hundred thousand dollars, perfectly a hundred thousand dollars the minimum we want to sell that for the minimum 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 is 125 that's it that's after everything's paid we're going to walk away with twenty five thousand dollars on a hundred thousand dollar investment which means a 25 percent return which means a 75 percent arv if we can get it 60 55 70 we'd even love it even better okay so that's the that's where we're looking at you know and that's just a, a rule of thumb a quick and we went over that last week Okay, so that is, I try and get down to it. Think of the end buyer is not going to pay over what the market will bear for that property. Think about it this way. A bank is not going to lend on a property that is priced too high. So if you have a, an FHA buyer or if you have um, a Fannie Mae, FHA buyer, basically, if you have an FHA buyer, the bank's going to look at that and say, Here's the comps. The comps are $150,000. We'll lend you X amount, you know, usually 80% of $150,000. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Plain and simple. I mean, it's, it, these are very simple, you know, the numbers don't lie. The numbers will not lie to you. Okay? So we, we have to keep it that way. We can't, oh, we can't go off on our own little tangent and think that the house is worth more. It is worth what it's worth. And the way it, you find that out is through the comp, comparable prices that have been sold in that area. Okay. What is a, are you a bird dog? <clears throat> bird dog, find a property for sale or not. And I put for sale or not, because sometimes if you have a bandit sign out there, um, someone was, th was thinking, yeah, you know, I thought about it last year. I saw my house, but uh, you know, I haven't thought about it, but if you're going to offer me money, I might think about it. So that, that price is, I mean, there's no, the house wasn't for sale. So finding a property for sale or not, that's why I put that up there. You know, we could look at the MLS. We could look at, um, uh, at wholesalers. We can find it, you know, from your realtor, find it from wherever you want pocket listings. Um, but also, you know, your bandit signs, if someone calls on your bandit sign and says, Hey, I have a house for sale. That house wasn't for sale unless until they saw your sign. So you could still do that. 
That's a bird dog. Um, another thing, a bird dog, there's no paperwork to do with the seller. A wholesaler, remember, a wholesaler puts it the house under contract under their name. There's no paperwork with the bird dog. You do not have to sign a piece of paper and say that you are going to buy that property. You, you, once you send it to me and once we say it's good, I send it to Ivan. Once Ivan says it's good, he sends it back to me. We go into contract. That's it. What happens then is once we get into contract, once we close, you get your money. That's it. You have no paperwork to do with the seller. We do all the paperwork. Okay? Again, there's no money out of pocket. You don't have to put up the earnest money deposit. There's no money that you're looking for to invest in this property. You're not a joint venture partner unless you have money and you want to go into it. You're not a lender because you're not going to just write us a check and let us take over the project. You're not a wholesaler because you're not putting it. You're not putting the thing in the contract underneath your name. You're a bird dog. That's it. Okay. You get paid when the home is bought and closed, meaning when we buy it and when we close it, not when we buy it and then sell it and then close it. That means when you get paid at escrow, when we sign over and take possession of the property, we take possession of the property. We send them the money. It within escrow instructions, you get X amount, however much we have determined before we go into contract. That's all the negotiations right there. We've gone over the pay scale before. Um, so you get paid when the home is bought and closed. Again, there's no money out of your pocket. That's a bird dog. No paperwork to do with the seller. That's a bird dog. And that's a, a wholesaler. Excuse me. No money out of pocket is a wholesaler. No, no paperwork to do with the seller is a wholesaler. Okay. So we still work with bird dogs and wholesalers, but this is the defined definition in my world of what a bird dog is. Okay. Uh, another question. Hold on. Okay. For everyone, what is the pay? What is the oh, price? For everyone, what is the pay? Uh, that's on. I broke that down. Um, they're asking. Uh, Mike was asking, "What's the pay for a bird dog?" It goes on a basis of the price of the house. I mean, that's and I and I forget what uh, um, what webinar I did that on. I think it was like number eight. If you go on to um, C to C Ria forward slash webinars and then um, go to Bird Dog and Opportunities and you look up there, and each one of my webinars is is um, <clears throat> Is labeled, excuse me, <clears throat> is labeled, uh, I think that's how do I get paid or, or yeah, how do I get paid? And, and that's, it's in that webinar, uh, Mike. So if you want to go there. Um, so, so what I want for a bird dog is, Fred, I'm getting right there. I just want to make sure that we understand it. Fred's question was, what is, what is um, so what you want for a bird dog is, we're getting this, uh, let me go here, sorry. Um, get all the necessary information. Okay, so no paperwork, no money out of pocket, get paid when the home is bought and closed, you get it, uh, get all the necessary information. Is that a bird dog? Yes. Okay, that's exactly what it is. And Fred, you were one slide too, too early for me. Necessary information that we need. I've put this up a few times. The address, the square footage, the bed and bath, the year built, lot size, rehab needed, and pictures on the right hand column for comps within one mile square footage plus or minus 200 square feet bed and bath equal so if we're if we're if we're getting comps for a three bedroom two bath we're not going to com compare it to a four bedroom three bath year built within 10 years up until the 19 early 1900s once we get into 1930s 1940s it's just going to have to be Pulling the comps is, is it's very difficult because there's a lot of, um, uh, I don't want to say custom homes, but a lot of uh, unique homes in the early 1900s. So we'll have to look at that. Um, lot size, similar. Don't compare a five-acre lot to a 7,000-square-foot lot. We can't do that. Okay? Um, obviously, there's um, – uh, 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 I got thrown off there. I'm sorry. Um, a lot size. We're not going to compare a five, a five acre lot to a 7,000 square foot lot. There's probably value in the land itself. Re, um, rehab needed. If you don't know the rehab, if you give me most, if you give me all of this, 
in, in some pictures, we can, we can get a rough estimate on a rehab. I'll send a contractor out. I will make a phone call. Once again, that's my job. I will get that information. But your job is to get me all of this that's on this screen right now. Okay? And at, at the very over here is, is show me that there's money in, in it. Show me that there's profit. Okay? And the big, the big one. Oh, man. Ivan, did you come on to say something? You're built. You're built. Well, if you look at it, the year built. Go ahead. Well, this is a subject property that's built in 1948 and comps that are in the 1990s. That's what I just said. If you look onto the right hand side, it's within 10 years. The year built within 10 years of the of the property that we're looking at. Make sense? Oh, yeah, I just can't see that. Oh, is it oh, not yeah. a pop? Yeah, it's on the screen. Uh, that was my fault. <laughs> yeah, within 10 years, unless we get into the early 1900s, and then we've got a lot of the, there's a lot of brick and mortar, there's a lot of unique styles. I mean, there's, and I, I forget the name of it. I, I want to say custom, but it's not. It's um, uh, like cookie cutter homes that are, that have a uniqueness to them. Sometimes we have to go with the, um, with the city and they won't let us do a lot of stuff. So, you know, until you get to the early 1900s, if, if you, if you're going to do a, a 1970s house, go up to, go up to 80 and down to 60, we can kind of vary within there. Um, lot size is similar. Um, and this is the big one. Comps, guys. Comps, comps, comps. I can't say this enough. This is what we need. We need this so that we can do our, so we, this will save you, which will save me time and not get discouraged. You won't get discouraged when you're going to look at the exact same thing that I'm going to look at. And you're going to say, oh my gosh, this, there's no, there's no money in this. You're not going to get get all this work done and then send it off to me and I'm going to send it back to you and say, hey, there's no there's no money in this. And you're going to go, well, I don't understand why. I don't understand why. Okay. Uh, another question on here, Fred. Uh, comps. What's that? Pictures of the comps, preferably. Pictures of the comps. There's no, there's no way for you to really tell that that is a legitimate comp unless you see pictures. Right. If it's been if it's been rehabbed, is it a rehab comp? Is it a is it a comp that um, that's that's right within where we're at, but it has it has nothing. I mean, it's never it, nothing's been done to it. That makes sense. Okay, he got up. There's another question from Fred. And Fred, I want to make sure I answer all yours. A complete description, a la multiple listing, including asking price, estimate of rehab, relevant comps, and photos. That's pretty much what I went over. Complete description on an MLS listing would be great. That tells me everything that it has. That means that usually the realtor gets that right from the um, from the assessor's office. You know, a good realtor. Let me back up. A good realtor will get that from the assessor's office. Now, if we if we can get into some variables here, if if they're selling a four bedroom, two bath house, and they and the um, the assessor's office shows it as a three bedroom, one bath house, that means that there's a bedroom. And, a, and two bathrooms that have been added that were not permitted. So that is, there's going to be some issues there. So we're going to have to, we're going to have to find that, you know, we're going to have to see what's going on with that. So multiple listing, including asking price is fine. Estimate of, estimate of rehab. Yes. If you can, if you can give a ballpark estimate of rehab and you've been, and you've done a, a, a rehab before, or you can get us pictures. That's the best. Yeah. Relevant comps and photos. Photos are the best. Okay. Um, one more time. Uh, Kimberly, would you mind clarifying what Ivan was saying about rehab comps and pictures? What he was what he was saying on the rehab comps and pictures, when you get a comp for a property, a comparable, it's nice to have a picture to go along with that comp. Say we're selling, you know, you send us a, a comparable that's really close with it. If we could see a picture of that property, and if it's sold, there's usually a picture of it on the MLS that you can pull off or pull it off of Google. So we can see how that property was, was done. So say that this property is, is there's a lot of money that we're, we're looking in this property and that we want to buy. And we're going, well, how did this person get, you know, $50,000 more than everybody else? If there's pictures, we can see, oh, well, they put, they put an upgraded granite in the, in the kitchen and the bathrooms. They did hardwood floors. They did a nice chair railing. They did wainscoting. You know, what I mean, so that's what helps us when we're looking at um, comps with pictures, so that we can justify why we could ask more for the, for our property. If so, what we're looking at is if we equip our property the same as this one that's sold for fifty thousand dollars more than everybody else, 
then we're going to try and equip that property that we're rehabbing to suit that so that we can get that top dollar. Okay. Does that make sense to you? Um, yeah. Gold toilets, Mike. Yeah. We'll put gold toilets in. Um, so Kimberly, did that, uh, that help you out? I hope so. Uh, if not, let me know. Yes. Perfect. Good. Okay. So yeah. So send the, 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 the comps with the pictures of the, of the comps. That way we can show where we can get our most money out of it. So if the comp that sold $50,000 more than, you know, a lot of them around there, Hey, we're going to try and outfit it the exact same way or as close to as, as we can. Okay. And this thing is beeping again. Okay. Comps, very simple. And the thing that everyone leaves out, it's usually what everyone leaves out is the comps and the comps are what is, I could say, geez, 90% of why we're going to, why we're going to do this. I mean, if we can, we've got the one in, in California that we were looking at, we were, we were going off the comps and we're, we were looking within a mile, but within that mile, I mean, if you go just across the street, the comps went up, got another 30%. So we have to see the comps to see why we can justify asking what we're going to ask for the, for this property. Okay. So very simple. And the thing that everyone leaves off, 98% of your job is done right there. 98%. Okay. That you've gotten everything except for the comps. So you've done your work. You've done your, you've got your, um, your, your house, your, you've getting, you've gotten the, the pictures, you know what the rehab is. You've sent out that stuff and you leave out the comps. It's 98%. 98% of the work is done. Ivan, did you want to say something? <laughs> well, I, I'm going to say why. In most cases, I think people leave out the comps is because that's that's the part of the process that requires some work. Yep. So not only are you providing a incomplete package that we're not going to be able to do anything with and you're going to feel frustrated and we're going to feel frustrated, <laughs> but you're also undermining your own learning curve and undermining the way that you're setting up your own relationships. Because in order for you to get solid comps on a particular property that you find, that's going to require you to contact your realtor in that area, which is going to require you to have called and developed a relationship with a realtor in that area so that you can get that kind of stuff. And obviously you can see the benefit of having a relationship because over time you're going to start building and growing your own network so that you can start doing your own deals on your own once you get out of this bird dogging thing. Because we're not going to, we don't want you guys to stay bird dogs forever and neither do you guys. So part of that, Part of the reason you're doing all this and part of the reason why we hammer everybody on this is so you learn the right way and go do it for yourself. Exactly. Okay. And then that's, I mean, this is the whole, that's the whole point. So don't sell yourself short by not taking that extra step because really it's having a bigger impact on your own business and the way that you're creating it and setting it up than anything else. You know, besides the fact that you're not giving us the right information we need to, <laughs> to go along in the process. Well, you know, and if, that, we're, if we're the ones that have to go mm -hmm. talk down a realtor and get the comps and develop that relationship, guess what? Now we're doing most of the work again. Mm -hmm. And why, why are we going to feel compelled to pay other people for us doing the work? You know, so, so th that's, that's where the give and take is. But anyway, that's what I want to say. No, it's perfect. Now, and, and, you know, you touched on something too, Ivan, is, is building that relationship with the realtor. You know, this is you going out and building your power team. You know, and, and a lot of the webinars people have asked, well, why would a realtor want to do that? Why would a realtor want to give me comps? L listen, you need a realtor in that area to sell that property. If, the, if that person is going to be gracious enough and nice enough to work with you and to work with us, why would we not want to work with them and let them list the property? That's what you guys have to understand. It's a building relationship. This whole thing is building relationship. If you want to work with someone, you've got to you've got to meet them face to face. You've got to reach out and and tell them it's not just a, a me me me. It's just not me me me. And and that's and we're trying to tell that with with this webinar tonight. It's not that I want you to do you know anything that that we're not going to do. Trust me, we're going to go and verify what you've done. We have to. But if you just give us a lead. In the end, when, if we were to close on that lead and you say, well, I want, I want $5,000, I want, you know, $2,500, we're going to say, you gave us a, 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 an address. And, and trust me, if you send something like that, I, use, I, have, I have sent it back with people 
insufficient information. So you understand that I've stopped. If I send you back an email that says insufficient information, that means that I'm not going to do any more work unless I have some free time and I want to go searching for this. That's it. So if you want to do the research and give me back the proper stuff, I will have no problem with, with going through with that. Um, okay, uh, Kimberly, uh, let Ivan know that he has uh, definitely identified our weakest link, establishing a relationship with the realtor. Kimberly, that's the, that's the, biggest, the biggest thing. I, I'm, I'm glad that I just went over that too because it, it is. You have to build it. There's nothing – there's nothing better than having a, a, a realtor that you can call and say, "Listen, I, I just I just found this property. Can you do some Can you do some research for me?" That realtor, think about it. And I've said it time and time again. That realtor is going to make if it's a six percent sale. That realtor is going to make six percent or three percent from us on the buy side. If they do that work for us and they're easy to work with and they and they like working with us, they're going to make three percent on the sales side. They also have the opportunity to make the other 3% on the buy side if they bring a buyer. So that one realtor can make 9% off of one deal. Why would you, why would they not, uh, why would they not want to work with you? You know, I mean, I, I've said it before too, just be honest and upfront with them. You know, you, you are, you are working with people that are cash buyers that want to want to go into it. And I've been doing this long, long enough to, that I've heard I'm a cash buyer. We do this all the time. You know, that's that that little zinger that you throw out there anymore doesn't really hold a hill of beans. It, it really doesn't. But I'm just letting you know that that's what that's what we're doing. OK. Um, where the money is at. OK. Here's here's where we're here's where we're going with this. Where the money is at. The bird dog makes their money on the last. Two percent. Don't stop short. Okay, if you send us halfway, three quarters of the way stuff, it doesn't, it, it's 98% done. Get everything in order. Make sure that you have everything on, on the list that we asked for. And I will go back to that list and I will keep it up there um, towards the, at the end of this, I'll keep it up there and I'll, and you guys can hammer with questions, you know, find out what you want. Pick my brain, do whatever you want, but I want to make sure that you guys get it. That's, you know, Ivan hit on a, on, a, on a great point too. It's not, we want you guys to go out and do this by yourselves. This is all, you know, we've been talked about, this is all free training. You know, we want to work with people. We want to, you know, build a team. If, 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 we're not, if we're not doing anything to benefit you, then we don't need to do this anymore. We don't need to, we don't need to have the webinar on, on Monday nights or you know, Wednesday or Friday or Thursday, you know, if, if you guys don't see a benefit in this, or if you guys don't see uh, um, a benefit, I mean, if, 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 if this is not helping you, then we're not helping you. And if we're not helping you, then we need to change something. You know, I think I've, I'm trying to give everything that I have that I know um, that is, that I know out for free. And what are we asking for? Is you just give us the complete information that so that here it is. We want to pay money for people that want to do 100 percent of the 100 percent of the job that we're asking them to do. That's it. If you send in 98 percent and you get zero percent of the money, you've just worked 98 percent of the deal. There is no reason the money is in the last two percent, and it's the last two percent that's the hardest. It's going out there and making that relationship with the realtor. It's getting outside of your comfort zone and making sure that all your T's are crossed and your I's are dotted. Making sure that you've got good comps. Making sure that you didn't go 20 years out on the, on the um, year build. Making sure that you didn't comp it out with a property that is a mile and a half away that's behind gates that's on a golf course. You know what I mean? This is the thing. These are the things. You could, you could have a, a property that's a half a mile away. And like I just said, it's behind gates. It was built 20 years newer, 20 years sooner, and there's a golf course on it. You can't take that as a comp. It's not going to, once again, don't, don't pretend that the buyers of this property are stupid. Don't think that you're pulling a fast one. You're not going to sell the property for anything more than it's worth or anything ex exponentially higher than the last property sold. Once again, unless it's got something 
completely that they want. If it's an FHA buyer, the bank is going to do all this. So what you're doing is you've done 98% of the work and the bank does the last 2% and they're the ones that are going to say no. Do you know what I mean? So that you've got to make sure that you follow through, get the whole picture, get everything down. Okay. So I'm this, I got just one more slide after this. And I'm, I'm hoping that if there's any questions, I'm going to go back to the one slide that we had that had the, um, exactly what we're looking for. If you want anything else, you know, ask me to, to go over it and, um, and we'll do that. But I want to, I want to make sure that everybody understands, you know, where we're at and what we've got going on. Um, go back to this one, this one slide. Uh, keep it back up. This one slide, that's it. Necessary information is what we need. Um, one question. Can we perhaps devote a night revisiting how to establish a relationship with the realtor? Perhaps a couple of your successful bird dubs submit with the, what has worked for them. Absolutely, Kimberly. That's a, that's a call out. If you guys, um, let me just back up and say, for those of you who are new on this webinar, and I see we've got quite a, quite a few new people. We have got a Facebook page that's devoted just, and it's a closed group, so we can, you can ask questions. You can request me to go over anything so that I can have it. If, if you request me to go over something, I'll do the research on it if I don't know it, and we'll, we'll devote a whole hour to it on a Monday night. I'll answer the question right there, but we'll go into it. And it's Bird Dog and Opportunities with Scott Travis, and it's on Facebook. Just look it up. Request to be in there. I will sign you in. Ask your questions, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Sunday night. It doesn't matter, and we'll get in there. But, Kimberly, I have no problem. If you want to, put that in there on in the bird dogging thing and I'll that way I have a, a, a reference to go to or send me an email. I haven't done that tonight. My email, my contact is Scott at C 2 C R E I a.com. We'll get back with you, but I have no problem going with over um, doing uh, established relationship with the realtor. That's, an, that's a great one. I think I went over it one time, but I'll be more than happy to go over that again. That's kind of the fun part. I like that part. I like getting to, uh, kind of getting inside their head and, and, and kind of feeling them out and see where they're at. And you can tell if you can work with them. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty easy, but go on to Facebook, do the bird dog and opportunities. We'll get that group going and just keep everything going. There is quite a few new people on. Um, another question. Uh, uh, Wayne and Elizabeth. Hi, Scott. Uh, you're back. Well, welcome back. Um, are you interested in tax liens? The person that you want to talk to on the tax liens is Ivan. Um, Ivan, I-V-A-N, at C2C-R-E-I-A.com. Send him an email, and he will definitely discuss that with you, okay? So that's – Hey, hey, wait a minute here. Do you don't want to? <laughs> I, actually, I don't, I don't do tax liens. Scott. Oh, you don't? I'm sorry, Ivan. I thought that we did. My bad. So I, I – I, <laughs> Wayne, Elizabeth, I just sent you all his information. Still just send him an email and tell him hi. That's all. You don't have to just just say hi to him. But no, I guess we I guess we're not interested in tax liens. Okay. So Ivan comes in and puts a wet blanket and leaves again. That's the thing. Yeah, there's only, there's only so many strategies we can we can tackle. I got gotcha. you. I, I completely understand, brother. That's why I I I wasn't doing them, and I didn't know if you were deciding to go into that. So it's all good. So. I've got this this screen up here, guys. I'm hoping that it that you're either taking a screenshot of it or there you want something to do. Um, you know, just look at it. If, if this is exactly what we need: the address, square footage, uh, bed and bath, year built, pictures, 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 and comps. We need comps, comps, comps. That's the big big thing. Okay. Comps with pictures, and that, that thanks to Ivan for adding that. Comps with pictures um, that is sold. So uh, with that, I'm looking over. I'll give a couple more minutes in case anybody has anything uh, that they want that I can help them with. Um, let me try and do this. Uh, let me do this. Your screen just went dark. Don't worry. It's me. 98% um, of the work is done. You guys are just missing out on that last 2%. Um, and I'm trying to get to the uh, contact page. There we are. 
contact us. Scott at C to C. There's my Facebook. Um, and if you want to go back on the previous podcast or webinars, just that's C to C Ria forward slash podcast. You'll see uh, bird dog and opportunities. And then you'll also see Ivan. Ivan has his on Thursday nights uh, with money matters. He talks about all the money. Um, we also have a phone number. We have now gotten into rehab consulting services. And what that is, is it's helping the rehabber that's having an issue or has never done one before and wants to make sure that the contracts look right with the contractor, um, how to keep the contractor on schedule, the pay schedules for contractors, what you should expect. Um, and I say this, this is my, my tagline, it's unrealistic expectations uh, that, that usually would happen, okay? Um, talk about consulting service, we can pay affiliate fee to them too. Yes, I'm getting a, a text message. Um, Talk about the consulting service we pay an affiliate fee. Absolutely. You also, if you refer someone to our rehab consulting services, there is a finder's fee that we will generally, or gener generously pass on to you. Okay. There's our phone number, 877-C2C. That's 877-222-7520. Extension 5 is me. There's just a general, um, uh, general line if you want to just leave a message. Uh, there's a line for the radio show. There's a line for Ivan, uh, Pete, myself, but my, my extension is extension five. If you have someone that you're that needs help with the rehab consulting, or if you just have a question, that's where you need to go. So wrap up tonight is, you know, make sure that you do 100% of the work that you need to send to us. Um, because trust me, once you send your 100%, it goes to me and I do 100% and then it goes to Ivan. He does 100%. So we're 300% covered when we go to to contract with these, with these properties. Okay. Um, reach out. Uh, friend me on, on Facebook. And uh, for those of you who aren't in uh, the Bird Dog and Opportunities uh, Facebook page, go in there, request to be added. I'll add you on. There's a lot of people that we've had in here that, that haven't, I don't know if they just don't have uh, Facebook or they haven't requested, but there's some good stuff in there that we'll go over. And then Kimberly, we'll go back to you again. Um, we're going to go over the relationship with the realtor. Or a couple of the successful bird dogs submit what they have worked, what has worked for them. Yeah, I'm sure that we can get Ivan on that night too, and, and uh, go from there. But like I said, that's that's pretty much one of my funnest parts is is talk with the realtors. So, with that, I will look over one more time. We are right at about an hour and five minutes. Um, uh, and we'll end it here. Let me give you two more minutes. Nothing, Mike. Thank you, buddy. You have a great night too. And with that, nothing else is going on. Sorry. Oh, hold on. One more from Kimberly. Sorry for my later island. Thanks for all the fantastic, good information. Confidence increases weekly. That's what we want. Kimberly, that, that is the best thing. We want your confidence to increase. That's with you saying that, 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 that helps me to know that we're hopefully reaching out and, and, and doing some good for people. And, and I really do mean that. Um, we want that to uh, we want that to go. I mean, we want to build a relationship, and that's what this whole thing is, guys. It's it's a power team. It's a relationship. It's working with people that you'd like to work with. You know, you could pick. It's not like you like not like your job at, at work. You can't pick the people you work with. You can't pick the people you work with when you work for somebody else. When you're doing this, you can pick the people you work with, and if you don't like them, you don't work with them. And that's just plain and simple. If a realtor rubs you the wrong way and you don't like them, you don't work with them. There's more realtors out there. If there's an escrow company that you don't like to work with, you don't work with them. You work with someone else. You know, this is, this is exactly what you guys have to understand. You are building your own, you are building your own power team with us. We want you to be part of our power team. And with the three of us and with what we've got going on, that's what we're looking for. And I think Ivan has one more thing. He unmuted himself. Ivan, before I sign off, do you want to say anything, buddy? Well, Gerald asked a couple of uh, the same question a couple of times. Do I do notes? And Gerald, that, that is an area that I'm getting into. It's not something that I'm very proficient at right now. I primarily do the rehab still, and I do insurance for all the real estate investors as well. So rehabbers, guys who have vacant homes, uh, investment properties, guys who are investing in notes, have apartments, all that kind of stuff. So everybody in the real estate investing space, 
Um, and notes is definitely something that uh, I've connected with several good people with, and I've gone through some some trainings, and I'm getting more into. But it's it's a you know it's it's like anything else, making a shift. Because if we're doing notes, then we have to take money that we're have kind of slotted towards rehabs, and we got to start going into notes. So you know what I mean? There's only so much to go around, and my goal is to kind of transition into that. Uh, but as long as we're still keeping ourselves busy with, with the rehabs, it makes it kind of tough to make the transition. Anyway, so hopefully that answers your question. Thank you, Mr. Ryman. Yeah, we have been we have been looking at notes, and it's been going back and forth for, I don't know, a few months now, a little more than a few months that we've been looking into that. But like I even said, you know, if we, if we take our shift away from doing the rehabs or, you know, our money is going to be taken from the rehabs to go back into notes, then it's going to be – you know, it'll take us a while to get back up and running. But as of right now, we want to keep we want to keep this going. But Ivan is has his finger on the pulse with the notes. He's going with it. So, with that, guys, I want to say thank you so much. Uh, went over a little bit longer than I anticipated. I want to we try to keep these right at an hour. So there's my contact information. Once again, we have a phone number eight seven seven c two 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 seven five two zero extension five is me. Um, if you have a, a someone that you know that needs some help. With starting the rehab on consulting, uh, give us a, a shout. We'll give you an affiliate uh, pay back to you. Um, so, guys, if you have a question, this will be up tomorrow, if not late tonight, and you don't know what a bird dog is, go back and look at it, okay? 98% of the job is, is, is done, but it's not 100%, and you know that. So just do that extra little work. Build your power team. Get everything up and running. We'll get on the schedule for Kimberly, uh, how to deal with the a realtor. So with that, guys, I'm going to sign off, and you guys have a great week. Uh, reach out on Facebook. Go to Bird Dog and Opportunities with Scott Travis on Facebook. Ask to be ask to join. We'll join you in there. Ask your questions there. Scott at c2c-reia.com. For any other questions, email me. Okay, guys, have a great night. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.